One month ago, I made the seismic shift from paper planning to digital planning, specifically on an e-ink device called the Onyx Books Note Air. The video I made detailing my new way of planning did surprisingly well, and I got a lot of questions from viewers about the device, the planner document, and whether their personal device could work for digital planning as well. So it seems I'm not the only one feeling burnout from the stickers and the inserts and just the sheer space paper planning takes up in my house. For those of you considering making the switch, this video will walk you through how to start digital planning, specifically the device you'll need, suitable apps to power your planner, and the file for the planner itself. First is your device. To plan effectively in a digital space, you'll need a tablet with a stylus, not a phone. Even the Samsung Note and the new Samsung Fold, in my opinion, are still way too small to effectively plan beyond your simple calendar app. Plus, the damn things are more expensive than tablets anyway. We'll start with e-ink devices because they're well known and they're my personal preference, and this is my channel, so here we are. There are multiple e-ink brands, but for the sake of brevity, we'll stick to the big two, Books and Remarkable. Both of these devices are perfect for digital planning, though there are some differences. For one, the Remarkable tablet only reads PDFs in portrait mode, which can limit you in the type of planners you can use. However, based on reviews here on YouTube, their stylus and overall writing experience is the industry leader as far as paper-like feel goes. It costs around $400 and offers note-taking, PDF reading and annotation, and their own syncing platform, allowing you to view and edit your documents across all devices. The Books Note Air costs more at $479, but unlike the lower cost Remarkable, it is a fully functioning tablet with access to the Google Play Store, a web browser, speakers, and a backlight, which is vitally important for that nighttime reading. It also has the ability to view PDFs in landscape mode, which is hugely important for the way I plan. If e-ink isn't your thing, or you simply want to minimize the number of devices you use, then a traditional tablet will also work for you. The three best sellers are Apple's iPad, Windows Surface, and Samsung's Galaxy Tab series. If you didn't already know, the iPad is the industry standard for digital planning, not only because the ecosystem's popularity, but because many of the best digital planning apps like GoodNotes are iOS only. I am not down with the Mac ecosystem, but as I understand it, the iPad Pencil creates a fantastic writing experience, and if you still want that decorative planning experience, then the iPad offers you the most options for that. The Windows Surface is what I use as my portable device, and it offers several fantastic apps suitable for planning. Because I don't use it often, I'm actually not using the stock Surface Pen, but rather an authorized, lower-cost version available on Amazon. It goes without saying that the writing experience is much more slippery and glassy than an e-ink, but it does have an erase button right on the pen, which is handy. The Galaxy Tab is a fully functioning Android tablet with all that that implies. And again, I've never used it, but the Galaxy S Pen is renowned for its smooth writing experience. Regardless of which device you're using, you'll need a PDF annotation app. Both Remarkable and the Book series have this ability built in, so you don't need to download anything extra. Both GoodNotes and Notability are iOS-only platforms, which is a shame because they offer the most flexibility for stunning visuals, adding stickers, and playing with fonts, and really just an overall beautiful planning experience. If you're using Windows or Android, there are fewer options, and to the best of my knowledge, nothing with the decorative flexibility of GoodNotes. But on my Surface, I use the Zodo PDF Reader and Editor, which is a glorious app allowing me to digitally plan. It's also available in the Google Store. Once you have your device and your app, you'll need your actual planner file. Now you've probably already deduced that digital planners are just PDF files, which you've no doubt worked with before. As a matter of fact, if you already have planner printables on your computer, you could use those if you wanted. For instance, this is the Heartbreathings HB90 Planner. 
It would work in principle, but it's not optimized for a digital planner. So it's small on my screen and there are no hyperlinks, meaning I have to scroll. I don't recommend using a printable as a digital planner, but you can if you want. The quickest thing to do is to buy a digital planner file that is compatible with your device on Etsy. If you're using an iPad, the options are almost limitless and you can choose an aesthetic that speaks to you. If you're on Windows or Android, the options are fewer but still present. Finally, if you're using e-ink like me, there are very few options and they're all in portrait mode, which to be honest, I don't prefer. There's also the option of making your own planner, which I am in the process of doing. It takes a long time to add all the hyperlinks, but for me, it's worth it. I have a few months before 2022 starts, so I have time to make the planner exactly as I want it to be. The great thing about digital planning is its flexibility. If you're just looking for a Bujo type of experience, then you can have that. If you're like me and you want monthly, weekly, and daily layouts, you can have that too all in one small package that you can take with you anywhere.